Uh, sorry, there was a small interruption. I'll uh, give my introduction again. My name is uh, Dr. Gina Fiji Shaijan. I'm a specialist psychiatrist. And today I'm going to talk on topic of prioritizing mental health in uh, the COVID season. This is especially important because we are seeing a lot of cases or a lot of rise in the case of anxieties and uh, panic disorders related to this COVID. We know that there are a lot of changes happening across in our lives. We know that there is a lot of uncertainty uh, covering um, uh, COVID. This is because anxiety and uh, fears always thrive on uncertainty. We are not used to this change. This was not predicted, neither we were expecting this to happen. It is very important to keep a balanced mental health state during this phase. And for this, first and foremost, we should know and we should accept the fact that the problem is there. The fear is there. And the good news is this kind of anxiety and this kind of the fear is positive because it is your, your body's defense mechanism to help yourself to fight the situation and help your family and the friends around. Now, how do you do this? First and foremost, you should accept the fact that there are certain things that you wouldn't have control on. So you should listen and follow with the government policies and also the health authority. You should do your routine activity daily, whether you're working from home or you're still started going to work. For this, you should understand for those people who are working from home, you have to differentiate between your work life and your home life. For this, you could do two things. One is when you know it is your work life, so you should have a start time and then you should have a end time. If not so, then you would end up working over time and stressing yourself. Also, you should also know that when you wake up in the morning, dress up well as you used to do every day when you're going to office. This will give you a feel good factor. So this is the way how you could differentiate between a work life and a uh, your, uh, home life. Prioritize your time. You should keep a time for your family, your children. Spend more time with them. Set up a routine. In this routine setting, you should have a fixed timetable wherein there's a time to eat, sleep, play with your uh, uh, children and to do your uh, office work or whatever activity that is involved. This is, the, this is very important because you can predict your day. Otherwise, everything goes in, in a very disheveled manner. People are very worried these days because the amount of the news that they get is very stressing. It's important that you need to keep yourself informed, but have a control on the information. Otherwise, it will stress you and cause panic. Limit to the number of times you're talking about coronavirus to your family and friend. Discuss if it's important, but otherwise they don't keep talking about it over and over again. People are worried and extremely stressful because there is social distancing happening now. It's just social distancing, my friends. It doesn't stop you from socializing. Virtual socializing, you can consider. Take your phone, call your friends, family, chat. Our technology is allowing us to do all this. Talk to them on a regular basis. Talk to them your concerns. Listen to them. This is very reassuring and it will help them and it will help you too. Eat well. Eat on time. Sleep well. Sleep on time. Six to seven hours of sleep is important to maintain a good immunity in any kind or to prevent any kind of infection, be it COVID or anything else. 
we should always remember that mental health is very important to keep because one of the biggest thing that we always talk about is immunity and immunity is maintained by keeping a low stress level this you can achieve by exercising regularly by meditating regularly there are lot of things that we always wanted to do now here is a time you can spend time with your family your friends your children there are so many things we always wanted to take up read some book we wanted to take up some hobbies here is the time do it slot a time for that declutter your mind what you see is what is there in your brain so if you have been having a lot of stuff which you have to declutter do that clean up your cupboards your wardrobes declutter those documents which has been piling up for ages do that when what you see is karma you will feel calm inside at the same time when you are talking to your friends and family try and uh, talk positive this is very essential so that they reduce your they you can you will be able to reduce your stress and you will be able to reduce their stress also in spite of all these things if there is any uh, anxiety symptoms like palpitation there is uh, choking sensation there is tremors panic like symptoms then you need help now since i have come to this topic let me talk a little bit about anxiety anxiety is a natural phenomena it's a body's own way to know whether there is a danger it's a fight and a flight mechanism it's actually needed but it becomes dangerous if it is excessive and if the thoughts become irrational now when do you know that anxiety is abnormal when a person starts having increased thoughts which is uncontrollable when the thoughts are more of negative which is anticipation of something going wrong when you start having physical symptoms now what are the physical symptoms like palpitation choking sensation breathlessness a feeling of impending doom a butterflies in the stomach tremors colds hands and feet exactly like as one could have it in a heart attack they could have people who would say that i had a left side pain or almost unconscious they would reach an emergency and the doctor said that you are all fine they did kept on the observation and left and what does that mean it means that the person just had a panic attack it is not a heart attack but a panic attack the extreme form of fear similarly these kind of symptom could happen during this covid in uh, covid uh, um, season this is because there are a lot of patients suffer from health related anxiety now what is that it means that they have anxiety thinking that they would have an illness any kind of illness so for example if a person is very anxious the heart pounds but the person who have health anxiety would perceive it as an heart attack he would perceive it as a heart related issue he would go to a cardiologist he would do a 2d echo multiple investigation when the reports come normal is not convinced because if you feel that something was missed and something was left undetected i'll give you a second example there are a lot of patients who have headache often when they have headache they google they find and they go to a various type of differential diagnosis and they would look at the worst case scenario now what could be the worst case a brain tumor or a brain cancer even a simple stress or anxiety could cause a muscle stress which will result in headache but this patient would always relate it to as a brain tumor now this is how a health anxiety presents now what happened in a covid anxiety they would relate the covid symptoms to that they are suffering from now we all know the one of the main symptom of uh, coronavirus infection is the patient might have fever sore throat body pain exactly like how we have in flu so the patient starts having that we have seen a lot of patients wherein they keep checking their temperature and they are not convinced with the fact that the 
temperature is uh, shown normal they would feel their body temperature rising they would feel feverish they often feel that uh, there is a sore throat they would just go out to buy a basic medicine or grocery as it is allowed even in a lockdown just by going and probably they cross a person and then they start feeling that probably had intellectually he would know it is not technically possible that as soon as you cross a person and immediately you wouldn't have a symptom like this it would take some time but psychologically you start ruminating about it over and over again and as a result they build up a lot of anxiety that disturbs their sleep their sleep gets disrupted the thought regarding the having an infection doesn't go away they keep researching about it they start asking reassuring reassurance from their relatives and friends and they feel that something is drastically going to go wrong with them these kind of symptoms are very commonly seen nowadays at the same time we are also seeing a lot of cases wherein the patient is presenting hysterically they are losing their control and even with psychotic disorder because of the present condition so my friends it's very important that we keep our anxiety level to a level that it will help us understand the situation and go through the situation well but if it is increasing more seek help because this stress itself reduces immunity which is not good for this season at all uh i'm open to any discussion or any concerns or uh, um talks if you have or any doubts you have i'm open for any kind of uh, discussion now i'll carry forward with various kind of anxiety that we see in these cases now there are set of patients who come for the first time during this time because everybody is anxious and um, because of this panic situation many people starts having new symptoms like they present with a panic for the first time and they don't know what it is and suddenly it's coming out of somewhere but those patients who are already vulnerable who has already gone through a phase of depression or obsession or anxiety there are high chances of relapse during this period so there is a special advice to such patients that in case if you are on medications please continue that because it is not time to reduce them at all now we are in such vulnerable state that we we just cannot afford to fall sick so continue your medication keep in touch with your psychiatrist and uh, continue with the dosage and in case if you think your anxiety level has increased probably a small increment in dosage here and there would help you to continue so now i am a psychiatrist here so it doesn't mean that every patient who comes to me will end up with a medicine no if reassurance work if relaxation therapy work that is more than enough for the patient so sometimes a new cases who present with anxiety some form of reassurance and relaxation technique and counseling will be more than they might need some medication sometimes in some individuals but for a short period of time which is not very elective and may not continue for a long period of time this is the doubt mostly most of the patient have when the, they come and come do we uh, need to take this medicine for lifetime do are these medication addictive do they have a lot of side effect no they do not have much of side effect maybe something like acidity or something like that they are not very addictive we can take care of the, of that portion too and they need not be taken for life yes it might be needed to control this in uh, in this uh, condition especially people are, who are prone are the people who are very anxious by nature now in between i spoke about people who are uh, obsessive compulsive disorder obsessive compulsive disorder are uh disorders wherein there is obsession and compulsion obsession is a recurrent ruminative thought and compulsion is a behavior now when now i'll give you an example for example a patient has um obsessive compulsive disorder regarding germs so the obsession is regarding germs so he keeps washing cleaning himself and washing hands uh, excessively 
Now, why do we do this? Because there is a thought that my hands are dirty and it is infested with germs. So he keeps washing his hands all the time. Now, when his hands are washed, he feels comfortable because the thought is gone because you did a compulsive act. Now, if he doesn't do that, his anxiety increases. So this exactly happens now. Nowadays, this thought has increased. Now, now those who has OCD or about germs, now their obsession has increased. They kind of have a license to wash their hands. They keep washing, cleaning all the time because their fear of being infected is double with the situation around. So this is the scenario where all the kind of mental disorders are presenting hysterically with a lot of kind of uh, relapsed cases in anxiety and obsessions. And it is very important for our we mental health people to educate that when you see signs and symptoms, please seek help. One and the foremost thing that happens is many of the people don't even realize that they have anxiety. Anxiety may not present with a feeling of uh, being anxious. Sometimes you might feel mentally relaxed, but some way subconsciously the thought process or the negative thought process would be on. You might start having decreased sleep. Indirectly, you would be always talking on this topic. Indirectly, you are always thinking on this topic and researching on this. This itself is a sign that we are going a little overboard over it. So it's very important that if you think that your life is in and around only this topic today, stop, distract yourself and do something. And if you're not able to do so, then in a day, you should keep a distracting, distraction time or a worry time, you can say. So you can worry in a productive way. So find a corner in a room which is not very comfortable to sit. Sit there and tell yourself, yeah, I give myself next 20 minutes to worry. So I'll worry about everything. I worry about having feeling feverish and will worry about that whether I will have COVID, whether my family will have COVID. Will I be quarantined again? Will um, have a negative outcome of the own event of the whole event? Will I lose my job? Will I have financial crisis? Worry till you think that you have nothing to worry about. So when you come out, you know you are worried enough and you have taken more time. Next time when you go to that corner, Make sure that you reduce five minutes of it. So this way you are practicing methods to reduce time in your brain. This way you can reduce your time. Help your family members also. Now there are small children in the house. Give them information similar that you know about it in a way that they understand. It is important for them to know that it's a situation where we need to be alarmed. There are things that they need to do. Because it's much difficult for a child to sit in a house without doing nothing. How much would they watch TV and how much they would be glued on to your laptops. So you will have to find creative ways to keep them engaged. So these are the ways that you can spend time with your family. Tell your and uh, also train your child in a way that they, they can self-help themselves. And learn and learn certain basics of life, you know, like like folding of clothes and uh, keeping the vessel back into the basin. These are small things might find very silly, but then when you when you when a child does it, they get a sense of independence. So this is how you could take care of a child in your family. You could speak to your spouse, find out if they have any concerns, talk to them, and. Decide that we wouldn't be talking about this particular topic for a very long time. And in case if you think that you are frequently looking at the news over and over again, again, as you have your worry time, you can have your news time. You can have an update in the morning. You can have an update in the evening. No need to look at the death score over and over again. Remember, it's a huge, huge world. There's a huge, huge population. So the death rate would be there. Keep the information to yourself, understand, but do not panic. We are doing, authorities are doing, just support and keep
keep doing things that will support the society. Now, in spite of all these things, we really do not know what to do and we are really feeling worried about it. What next could you do is contribute to the society. Now, how do you do sitting in a house that you contribute to the society? You can still do that. You can create some video in whichever way you are good at it. Educate somebody about anything that you know. I know about mental health, so I keep doing that. And that gives me a relief that I am helping. I am helping the society during this difficult phase. You are good in your marathon or some exercise. I saw some video in your uh, um, group. So by doing so, more and more people can come up with different ideas. If or I mean, not only that, if, if some um, uh, parents or a mother or uh, ladies would want to take up some cookery, uh, cookery class online or you would want to teach them, see uh, some children online, these small, small basic things, if you start contributing to the society, you will feel that you have been of a good benefit in this scenario. This is something very serious and only thing that will help us in this scenario is when we are together. The day that we do not unite, this virus will take us. The virus is teaching us one thing. Be united, be together, but physically distant away. That's, that's what they are asking for. So do that and I'm sure that mentally you will calm down and you will be able to tackle the situation. I am sure there are a lot of other problems that would come financial in this. But then those things you do not have control on. What you have control on, do now. Now your priority is your health. So take care of that. Rest, leave it. We will see when it comes. Um, if there is any questions, I am ready to take it up. You can just type, probably I will answer. Okay. A um, lot of cases of depressions also have uh, increased, like uh, sadness and uh, uh, thinking about the negative outcome of the illness. As I said, Worry about those portions where you know that you can contribute. Worry about those portions that you know you can control. The ones which you are not under control, probably you just have to leave it and just have to wait as the whole world is waiting. So I end my discussion here with a note that we should all try and talk positive. Talk positive to everyone that we meet, especially on this topic. We are always talking negative. See what happened there. So many people are dying in Italy. Look at China. Look at India. The numbers are rising. I agreed. But you be a role model. Be You be an um, advocate wherein you are talking only positive and encouraging others to uh, positive. Tell them this bad phase also will pass. Tell them that. Trust this also will happen soon. Then. Now I have a question uh, by Mr. Ram. He is asking how to deal with children with Asperger's syndrome during this time. Now for the audience who are listening, Asperger's syndrome is a kind of pervasive developmental disorder. Um, a brief idea, it is something like, um, it is an autistic disorder wherein their intellectual function is intact, their language functioning is intact, they are very skilled children, they are very intellectual uh, ch child in uh, many different ways, but they have difficult in social communication. Social communication, the way they maintain their eye contact, the way they feel for a person, for them everything is either it is white or black, there is no grey zone. So if you say that I whack you, if you do not study, they will take the whack very sincerely and they will really be threatened that it's going to be a real threat to them. They wouldn't understand that it was just a threat, if I do it, 
probably my parent wouldn't do that now this is about what is asperger's syndrome and now how do you deal with them yes it is uh, quite difficult especially if the um, what we recommend for a pervasive developmental disorder is this children should be socially active they need to uh, do a lot of extracurricular activity to keep yourself mind occupied but in this this scenario it becomes difficult but as parents you can do certain things as especially those children with aspergers they are very skilled child probably if it is maths or certain areas which they would be good at you can inculcate more ideas you can find out um, different um, uh, therapies online there are a lot of online therapy centers wherein you can keep them occupied again you understand that pers a person uh, with a pervasive developmental disorder be it autistic or aspergers they need a routine if you disturb their routine they are quite disrupted in their behavior now i can understand now uh, they would have been a disturbance in their routine their schools would have been closed their therapies would have been stopped and now they are at home you would be definitely uh, wearing the blunt of it but now that they have been at home for a long period of time within the given period fix up their routine the time they wake up the time they have uh, their uh, bre uh, breakfast the time they going to have their activity time uh, the time they going to sleep uh, the therapy time whichever the way you are able to provide to them those things have to be correct then it will not disturb them i have a second question from ritu uh she, she asked that how do you deal with ocd in such times where does one draw a line first of all ritu ocd is a disorder now if you ask him for a lay person if they having any oc symptoms let me tell you they could be a person who could have a obsessive compulsive trait they could be a personality that is obsessive compulsive personality disorder and there is an obsessive compulsive disorder now let me start with a person with has a personality disorder now there are lot of people who has this obsession obsessive personalities wherein they want many things in perfection be it timing be it order be it cleanliness or maybe do one of the thing okay so for them it's not a disorder it's just their personality it doesn't bring about anxiety in them it is just that the way they are it could be a little tough most of the scientists or mathematicians or you could see the, the big famous personalities who have into research we have seen they are ocpds because if they want something and they have to do something they are into it now in a disorder it may when do we call it disorder we call it a disorder when it starts disturbing the person and is surrounding and he is not able to do now the example that i gave you about washing hands now if he is standing there and he keeps washing and over and over and over again and which result in a washer's hand and peeling of his hand or those people who have checking behavior like checking of locks doors lights and you at the end result is that you reach your office late then then it's a disorder because it's disrupting your life now it's disrupting your family now it's disrupting your work now we have seen a lot of patients who have um, are in accounts and um, they keep checking and tallying all the time those people who are in office as you send emails they keep reading the email over and over again over and over again and as a result their work get disrupted and there is a lot of backlog now this is a line that you should know it's going to align where you are not able to function properly so no now you know this is ocd and the other is ocpd ocpd is generally good enough oc traits are good enough they just mean that you are a perfection as far as is not harming anybody you are good just that don't keep expectation from anyone else if you are bothered about cleanliness do it now if you start expecting from others beyond a point probably going to be a problem and can cause interpersonal relationship problems um i have one more question from viv menon he writes like how does one deal with polarized opinion on social media the opinion is already polarized viv so yes you know that 
since you asked this question, you already know the answer. Social media has its own um, pros and cons. So there are lot there are a lot of ways wherein we can use it positively, and um, and can stop doing that when you think that it is going overboard. Now this is the best time, like I um, where people have been using social media in a positive way for spreading information, for spreading awareness, for creating an event like this, wherein even one thing that could help would be a big change. I did a similar program just two days back in a TV and one of the audience told me that after seeing the program, the she went and cleaned up a cupboard and uh, cleared up the clutters of the um, of the documents and she feels very calm then my work is done so when you are using it in a positive way definitely the social media also can be taken in a positive direction um i again have a question from ram and he's asking how does one deal with anxiety arising out of economical loss of income now this is something that we are going to face uh, after the acute covid crisis is uh, going to settle we all know the whole world knows about it already the troubles have started yes again this is something that how much we have to decide how much is in our control we'll have to wait and watch and we'll have to cut down on our uh, probably for instance is like uh, now this is a very broad question but i let me give it as an example and answer it for example if i say that a person is coming and telling me that uh is uh, already been intimated that his salary is going to get slashed he is going to get half a salary now you cannot do anything about it you might not get a job anywhere else you have to live with this half salary probably you will have to sit with your family and decide that how you are going to do it how are you going to bear this expenses is there anything else that we need to do to bring up expenses and how are you we going to cut short on all the expenses which is already existing probably that's the best way you can do it now and you will have to do it right now and majority of people have to do it that way the kind of uh, expenditure we have been having like going out eating maybe we'll have to reduce all that i know in spite of all these things there will be many other financial crises especially people who are running their own businesses i am sure the government also will come up with some plans for them and uh, some leniency i think everybody should help each other especially the organization also should be very considerate with their employees everybody should be considerate with each other and uh, especially in finance aspect that's because it's a world over and only when we have support from each other this can be controlled um i have a question from sudhir prabhu he has written that how does one deal with a person with alcohol withdrawal symptoms these days um sudhir uh, it depends how bad is his alcohol withdrawal symptoms if he's been a chronic alcoholic and uh, if uh, the symptoms are um, first let me explain what are the symptoms of alcohol withdrawal especially for people who have been taking alcohol for a pretty long time and uh, in a, and in in a good uh, quantity then when if you are not accessible to alcohol then you get this alcohol withdrawal symptoms wherein you could have tremors shivering vomiting because your body is asking demanding for alcohol the person is restless very anxious the bp bp may shoot um loss of appetite these are the basics acute symptoms but if it is um, a little severe he might get uh, psychosis he might hallucinate he might present with the psychotic symptoms so this could be even dangerous and um, the patient uh, there there are cases where it could be fatal to so if it is just minor if there is only minor symptoms and the person is just about craving yes you should help yourself by um, meditation you should uh, seek help with your family members to support you so that don't give in on the craving but if you think you have symptoms please contact your um, general doctor or a professional wherein i am sure these kind of treatment is still available during lockdown 
because withdrawal could be dangerous. Initially, they might present with mild symptoms and they could go into severe symptoms. So seek your help. So for whomever you have asked this question, ask them to seek help to your professional. They will give you some medications. They can overcome this withdrawal. Uh, I am seeing no more questions that's come up. So if uh, Ram gives me a signal, I would know that uh, whether I need to continue or uh, can I finish this session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dear and Viv. And since you all are folks who are all into marathon and exercising, I'm sure I, I could, I, I had gone through your uh, uh, um, group. You all are posting videos of exercises and motivating each other. And that's one very important factor because when I talk to people that they need to maintain their routine, they said that one thing that stops them from doing is their laziness. So one way to get through the laziness is uh, palling with your friends. So if you have an activity which is uh, you can plan with your friends, then you can uh, do it together. Sometimes individually it doesn't work. Uh, thank you so much Ram. Uh, thank you so much Ritu for inviting me for this program. And uh, I hope it was of some help to you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.